So, when did you live in Morocco? Oh, in the late 90s. I kind of bounced around to a bunch of different places over the past few years. Oh, yeah? Like where? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, where? <laughs> Let's see. Austin, um, Istanbul, Sri Lanka, Portland, Costa Rica, Buffalo, a couple other places. Wow, were you in the Peace Corps? No, I just like to move a lot, you know? I kind of get stir-crazy if I'm stuck in one place for too long, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, completely. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben is celebrating his honeymoon with his new wife Lisa on an island. But while there, things don't turn out exactly as he would have wanted. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 bye bye, honey. I love you. I love you. We jump. Returning home to New York alone, he attempts to piece his life back together. Ruben goes to an art gallery with his friend Sandy where he runs into former junior high school classmate Polly. In this lesson we're going to learn with a clip where Ruben and Polly go on a date to a Moroccan restaurant. But before we get into it I want to let you know that we make lessons every week to help you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without subtitles. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell down below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. Wow, were you in the Peace Corps? No, I just like to move a lot, you know? I kind of get stir-crazy if I'm stuck in one place for too long, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, completely. <laughs> <laughs> no, remember you were the person who Oh broke my god, I can't believe you. Oh, of course. You were like the greatest delegate in Model UN history. <laughs> I guess I did manage to pass a few resolutions. <laughs> Are you okay? Because you're sweating pretty profusely. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I always react this way to spicy food. Okay. Yeah, but I love it. God, you know, I can't believe you're not married. I mean, even when we were kids, I always saw you as that guy that would settle down at a young age, you know? You were always kind of like an old young guy. Yeah, well, it just hasn't happened. <clears throat> but uh, what about you? Hmm? You ever gotten close, or? Oh, to the whole marriage mm -hmm. thing? Oh, God, no, no way, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not really big on the whole um, long-term commitment thing. Uh, why, are you coming out of a bad relationship, or? No, I'm kind of coming out of, like, eight bad relationships. Mm. <laughs> eight? You sure I can't get you a towel or something? I mean... No, no, I'm good, but, but I mean, if the right person came along, things might be different, right? Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Sorry. Um. Hey, you mind if I go to the men's room? Please. Okay. Sure. Oh, oh, gosh. What's interesting about Ruben and Polly starting a relationship is that they're polar opposites of each other, meaning they have very different personalities. Polly is free-spirited, or she's independent and unconventional. Right. New birthday resolutions. I, Bridget Jones, am done with affairs of the heart. We'll hang only with new free-spirited friends like Miranda. And when the going gets tough, the tough go on a luxury spa weekend. Whereas Ruben is uptight, meaning he has traditional attitudes and finds it difficult to relax. It's the principle. No, the principle is I went to go help my daughter who was in trouble. Hey, Evan, you can't be such a control freak, man. You're too uptight. Yeah, Bob, I'm uptight. I'm uptight about the aliens that are killing people in our neighborhood. That's what I'm uptight about. I kind of bounced around to a bunch of different places over the past few years. Oh, yeah? Like where? Uh -huh. The primary meaning of bounce refers to the movement of a ball, like you see here. A basketball bounces up and down. She says she bounced around to mean she lived in many different places. She could have said she bounced from place to place. No, I just like to move a lot, you know? I kind of get stir-crazy if I'm stuck in one place for too long, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, completely. Stir-crazy means extremely nervous and upset, especially because you feel trapped in a place. <laughs> Bernadette still going stir-crazy? Uh, little. Two months of bed rest. It's kind of rough. If you're stuck, you're unable to move from a particular position. 
Yeah, we're stuck in traffic in a stolen police car with what is sure to be a missing child in the back seat. No, I just like to move a lot. You know, I kind of get stir crazy if I'm stuck in one place for too long. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, completely. You know what I mean is a question we like to add at the end of a sentence to check whether or not the other person understands what we have said. This is a very useful expression you can use for conversation. Take a look at some other examples. Oh, you're not a mistake. Your sister was the mistake. Oh my God! Her older sister, I mean, she wasn't planned, you know what I mean? Because... So how do you and Brooke know each other? Well, how don't we know each other, you know what I mean? Now, it's funny that Ruben replies... Oh yeah, completely. Because as I said before, they have very different personalities. And while he appreciates staying in one place, she has the need to move houses constantly. Are you okay? Because you're sweating pretty profusely. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I always react this way to spicy food. We can use profusely to emphasize the meaning of a few verbs like sweat or bleed profusely. It means to a great degree or a large amount. You don't need to lie to me. I don't appreciate it. I know I look like a fat cow and I'm sweating no. profusely. You can also thank someone profusely or apologize to someone profusely. I'm sorry, that was 100% inappropriate and I do apologize profusely, I'm, oh. Spicy food is a type of food that gives you a burning feeling in your mouth. Oh, everything, I love it. It's delicious. No, it's not spicy. You can There's order a gift shop there. God, you know, I can't believe you're not married. I mean, even when we were kids, I always saw you as that guy that would settle down at a young age, you know? You were always kind of like an old young guy. We use the phrasal verb to settle down to describe the moment in adulthood when a person starts living a calm life in one place, especially when they get married. We're so proud of you, Jack. We didn't think you would ever settle down, but then we met this wonderful girl. You couldn't have done better. <laughs> Again, this accentuates their two very distinct personalities. He is someone who can imagine already being settled down while she's still figuring out what to do in life. Let's now take a look at the connected speech in this sentence. I always saw you as that guy that would settle down at a young age. First of all, notice the pronunciation of settle. In American English, this is pronounced with a soft flap T, settle. However, in Britain, we would say this as settle. Now, notice that the first that is pronounced differently to this other that. The first one is that with an open a sound and the second one is with a schwa this is because there are two types of that when that is used as a demonstrative adjective meaning when we say that window or that person when we use the a vowel sound like in the word cat however when it's used in phrases like i think that we should go or the people that live next door, the word that is said in its weak form with a schwa sound. That's important to know because the secret to speaking fluently like a native speaker is knowing how to link and reduce your words. The would here is also said quite weakly. Then also notice how she says these two words. For kids, I always saw you as that guy that would settle down at a young age. Now take two seconds to mimic how she says that. That guy that would settle down at a young age. That guy that would settle down at a young age. I know that understanding when and where to use certain words can be quite challenging. To help with this and other language obstacles, we've created our Fluent with Friends course. Here, you will not only have fun while learning words and expressions from the TV series Friends, but also how to apply them naturally in your daily life. You can try it for free right now with our three-part masterclass. Simply click here or the link down in the description below. After Polly mentions she can't believe he is married, what phrase does Ruben use to ask her if she's married? And you? What about you? Have you?
That's right, we use what about you to ask the same question to the other person that has just asked us, or to ask about something we've just been talking about. Oh, I love Minnesota. I grew up in, in a town outside of Minneapolis, like a population of like 500 people. <laughs> really small. Yeah, it's like the land of a thousand lakes. What about you? But uh, what about you? Hmm? You ever gotten close or? Oh, to the whole marriage thing? Oh God, no, no way. We use no way to say no in a more emphatic way. Take off your mask. No, no way. No one's ever seen me without this mask and no one ever will. Do you think you'll do it again? No, no way. She was totally repulsive. We also sometimes use it in a phrase like, there's no way. There is no way I'm going to let you do that. I'm not really big on the whole um, long-term commitment thing. If you say you're big on something, you mean that you like that very much. Example, I'm not big on classical music. We also often say something like, someone is a big poker guy or girl, or he's a big sports car guy. I'm not really big on the whole um, long-term commitment thing. Long-term means happening, existing, or continuing for many years or far into the future. In this context, commitment refers to the relationship between two people. In this movie, Polly has a hard time feeling okay with the idea that she'll be in a long-term relationship with another person. Hang on, hang, hang on a minute, Jones. Just slow down. It started on Tuesday and now it's Thursday. It's not exactly um, a long-term relationship yet, is it? Very bad. <laughs> Now, try to guess the opposite term. How would you complete the following sentence? I'm not going to go into a long-term relationship with him. It's just a thing, an affair, a fling. Ruben, come on, this is a fling. You know, come on, what did you think we were gonna get married? Really big on the whole um, long-term commitment thing. Uh, why are you coming out of a bad relationship? Or? Here, the phrasal verb "come out of" means to reach the end of a process or event. No, I'm not. I'm over her. I've moved on. In fact, I'm starting to think there's a lot of good that came out of that experience. Like we do with most phrasal verbs, we link "come out of." Pay attention to the next line. No, I'm kind of coming out of like eight bad relationships. <laughs> so come out of is said, of course, faster than that. It's come out of. Note the reduction of of. It's come out of. Here it's in the continuous form though, which normally we say as coming out of. That is dropping the G. Lastly, note that she says kind of like kinda. No, I'm kind of coming out of like eight bad relationships. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. But but I mean, if the right person came along, things might be different, right? Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Come along is the phrasal verb alternative to the verbs such as appear or arrive. You might use it in a sentence like take any job opportunity that comes along or... And you know what? When you least expect it, something great might come along. Something better than you even planned for. Another use of this phrasal verb is to encourage someone to accompany you somewhere. Okay. Nick is desperate to learn. He'd love to come along. Let's yeah. make it happen. Yeah, sure. If you haven't noticed, the name of this movie is the inverted form of this phrasal verb, Along Came Polly. We don't frequently invert the words of a phrasal verb like this. If we do, it's to make it sound more special or poetic. Example, up went the rocket. <laughs> Um, hey, you mind if I go to the men's room? Please. Okay. Sure. Oh, oh, gosh. We use do you mind if or would you mind if to politely ask someone's permission. Hey, Glenn. Do you mind if we switch seats and I sat in the window seat? Men's room is a toilet for men in a public building such as a hotel or restaurant. So, when did you live in Morocco? Oh, in the late 90s. I kind of bounced around to a bunch of different places over the past few years. Oh yeah, like mm -hmm. where? Oh God, where? <laughs> Let's see, Austin, 
um, Istanbul, Sri Lanka, Portland, Costa Rica, Buffalo, a couple other places. Wow, were you in the Peace Corps? No, I just like to move a lot. You know, I kind of get stir crazy if I'm stuck in one place for too long. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, completely. <laughs> what does she mean? She lived in different places. She's just out of a relationship. She's just moved into the city. Are you okay? Because you're sweating pretty profusely. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I always react this way to spicy food. Okay. Yeah, but I love it. God, you know, I can't believe you're not married. I mean, even when we were kids, I always saw you as that guy that would settle down at a young age, you know? You were always kind of like an old young guy. Yeah, well, it just hasn't happened. If you settle down, you start living peacefully in one place. You get fired from your job, get a promotion at work. Why, are you coming out of a bad relationship, or? No, I'm kind of coming out of like eight bad relationships. <laughs> eight? You sure I can't get you a towel or something? I mean... No, no, I'm good. But, but I mean, if the right person came along, things might be different, right? Oh, yeah. You're probably right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hey, you mind if I go to the men's room? Please. Okay. Sure. Oh, oh, gosh. What does come along mean? become friends with someone, get married, appear or arrive. If you're a fan of Jennifer Aniston like I am, then I highly recommend you check out this lesson we made with her hit series, The Morning Show, next. Jennifer Aniston plays the protagonist, Alex Levy, a famous news anchor of a popular TV program, The Morning Show. The Morning Show is broadcasted on the UVA network. When talking about the TV industry, network refers to an organization that has television stations and broadcast content through one or more channels. For example, you might have heard of Fox, NBC, CBS, and ABC, which are four of the main broadcasting networks that operate in the United States. 